Hey everybody, so today I'm going to do a Bible reading from this cool thing called the Action Bible. And uh, it is a really neat piece of literature and artwork. It's got all of the major stories in historical order and uh, it's, it's a really great thing. So today we're just going to start. In the beginning, there was nothing except God. Day one, God's Spirit moved through the void. Then God spoke, Let there be light. Day two, then God separated the waters of the nothingness into the moisture and the clouds of the sky above and the drops and waves of the ocean below. God named the skies heavens. Day three, God named the lower waters the sea. He gathered together the waters of the sea, exposing dry ground. He named the dry land earth. On this land he made grass and flowers and trees. He made them with seeds so they could grow more grass and flowers and trees. The fruitful earth was a place of beauty, and God knew that it was good. Day 4. Then God fashioned the sun, the moon, and the stars to light the earth and set them in the heavens to mark the days, seasons, and years. Day 5. God said, Let the water be filled with living creatures, and the seas and rivers swarmed with whales and fish. God said, Let birds fly through the sky, and the open sky above the earth was filled with every kind of living bird, and God knew that it was good. Day 6. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures. And God made all kinds of animals, wild ones, tame ones, even those that crawl on the ground. Then God created the first man, Adam, and the first woman, Eve. They were the greatest of all of God's creations because He made them in His own image to be a reflection of what He is like. He planned for people to rule and live in harmony with every living thing on earth. And on the seventh day, God rested. Tempted in the Garden, based on Genesis 3. Look, Adam, the little bird comes when I call. God is good to us. He has given us everything. Everything except fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But Eve wanders. And one day she goes to the tree and gazes at its forbidden fruit. Satan, in the form of a serpent, tempts Eve. Are you sure God said not to eat this fruit? Oh, yes. If we even touch it, we'll die. Oh, you won't die if you touch it, see? And if you eat it, you'll be wise, just like God. You're right, and if this fruit will make me wise, surely there's no harm in taking just one bite. Adam, it tastes delicious, and it will make you wise. But the forbidden fruit has far different effects than the serpent promised. Suddenly, Adam and Eve realize they have disobeyed God. Their innocence is taken away as well. In the stillness of the garden, God comes to Adam and Eve. Have you eaten the fruit I told you not to eat? I only ate it because the woman you gave me handed it to me. The, the serpent you created tricked me. Because you disobeyed me, you must leave this beautiful garden. From now on, you'll have to work hard to survive. God makes clothes for Adam and Eve out of the animal skins and sends them away. Look! A flaming sword blocks the entrance to the garden. We can never go back now. God's promise of salvation. The perfect unity between God and His beloved creation is now broken. For all time, Adam and Eve are forced to create a new life out of their knowledge and shame. But already God has a plan to redeem His creation. God promises that one day He will send a Savior for His people. And we'll see what happens with the rest of the story. I hope you can join us again as we read more from the Action Bible. God bless.